methamphetamine. And this is what I do to motivate myself a little bit. A drug that was also known for a while as redneck cocaine. It's a little like, you know, rah. It's believed to be only used by hicks in rural areas. They use it, but so do gay men in urban centers. A lot of people use it for sex. As a way of sort of enhancing their lives, enhancing their partying. But no, I, I do it and I channel my, my inner passions. So here we go, let's turn up. Over 11 million Americans have tried meth at least once. You ready, girls? My name is Courtney. The same data says 440,000 were last month users, but this is all data from 2012. I'm 29. Its use is likely still on the rise, according to DEA meth seizure data. I am a functioning drug addict. Here we go. Crystal meth is extremely addictive, and Courtney has been addicted for five years. Would you like to get the booty bump on camera too? <laughs> use among gay men happens at a higher rate than other users. It's very difficult to try to really get our hands on what proportion of gay men are actually using meth. But I think it's safe to say, based on a cross-section of the studies that have been published, gay men are overrepresented in the population of methamphetamine users. That's called a health disparity in public health research. With this drug, what it's known for is bringing out the, the uninhibitedness of, of your inner like sex beast, I guess you could say. And it's not exactly a secret in the gay community. There's actually a term for it, party and play, or PNP. To describe the association between engaging in sex and using drugs. Nine times out of ten it is, is meth when you're, you're par partying, you know. The reason that meth use allows individuals to stay up for two days or three days and have marathon sex is because it's speed. Meth use has been viewed as a causing factor of HIV. But Dr. Halkidis' research and Courtney's experience suggest something more complicated is happening. I felt I've been gay since I was like two or three. I would dress up in my grandmother's high heels and put on my grandmother's dresses. Growing up, Courtney was rejected by his father and turned to sex chat lines in search of a male mentor. I've been having sex since I was like 12 with grown men. He said he had slept with over 50 people half adult men by the age of 14. That's abuse. You know, that's sexual abuse. By 21 years old, Courtney found out he was HIV positive, and three years later, he tried meth for the first time. I was 24 years old in Atlanta, Georgia. I had uh, broken up with my ex. I found out I was HIV positive. It's like nothing mattered to me, you know? I, I wanted to get away. I wanted to get, take my mind off of me being positive. It took the hurt away, in, in the most part. In a 2014 study, Dr. Halkidis found that 65% of HIV-positive men started using meth a few years after contracting the disease. There's a theory, um, multiple minority stress theory, that argues the higher the number of memberships in minority groups that you have, the more likely you are to have health consequences because you are living in a society that discriminates against you or stigmatizes you because of your race, because of your sexual orientation, because of your HIV status, and because of your economic means. And taken together, those four factors create a reality for someone that is not a particularly nice reality. And so methamphetamine provides a very quick and easy escape from day-to-day -day living. After five years, Courtney is finally telling family members about his addiction and trying to stop. It just took for now for him to really come out to let us know. So basically now my thing is, like I said, do more things on helping him quit. But of course, quitting and staying clean is a struggle. The typical treatment for meth addiction is behavioral therapy, basically Alcoholics Anonymous for meth. And at the park with his cousin, Courtney bumped into a former heroin addict who had similar advice. Uh, September 4th, for seven years. Congratulations. Congratulations. How about you? Are, are, are um, you were you were you are you? I'm I'm currently or? using. Um, oh yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Off and on, but yeah. it's 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 a it's a everyday. It's a it's a process and it's a. Yeah, man. I mean that's why meetings and shit, or like even just talking to people who have a similar problem is it because it's an isolatory disease. Being being clean this long, I can tell you, it's it's the greatest. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Sobriety is something that you gotta wanna do. You gotta wanna be sober. You gotta wanna take those steps to, to move forward and have a, a functioning life. Drugs, you know, they ruin people, they ruin lives. I mean. 
you want to get sober? Of course. I will get sober, not wanting to. I will. Again, I... 